Hey, what's up guys? It's Enrique here, PRG Real Estate, and we're coming at you with another market update for August, 2023. Yeah. I got a special guest today, Mr. Steve Torres, one of our longtime uh, partners, associates, yep. uh, and preferred lenders over at Alliance Lending. So uh, today, Steve, uh, I brought you on because you, you've been in the business for a long time. Yeah. You deal with the lending side. You talk to clients yeah. every single day. So we're gonna give the viewers a little bit of perspective as to what they need to know about buying a home and getting a loan. But let's first start off with the stats. Okay. I always like to start off with the stats of what's happening in Santa Clara County. So in the month of August, we just finished August, we just nice. got the data, active homes, this is single family homes, townhouse and condo. There were about 1200 homes on the market in the month of August. Yep. And what's funny is that what sold in the month of August, a little over a thousand homes sold. Pretty much. Pretty much everything, everything right? Everything that was on the market. Everything that was on the market. If 1200 homes hit the market, a thousand of them sold. So that tells us that the inventory is still really, really tight. Correct. If you're a buyer out there and you've been shopping, you see that there's not a lot of homes for sale or when a home does pop up, it's like within a week or so, it's it's gone. And with rates being high. And with rates being higher right now than <laughs> yeah. before, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, and then let's look at the sales price, sales price to list price ratio for August. It was about 104.6%, about 105% meaning that on average, homes are going almost 5% over, over the asking, asking, over asking. And then they're selling within about 18 days on the market on average. Which and you'll have- still amazing. That's right? fast, right? Mm -hmm. So like sellers, if you're a seller, if your home looks good, if it's priced right, Correct. Within a week or two, it's it's gone. It's gone. And, and in some neighborhoods, it's even faster than that. Like, yep. I've seen like two or three days when I'm talking to some of the agents. And then one thing I also like to look at is where the price is going, right? Because some yeah. people think, well, the market might slow down or the prices might drop. But if we look at the stats, in July, the average price in Santa Clara County was 1771000 approximately. Yep. In August, it was 1843000 So it went up. It went up, right? right? Lower inventory, even with rates being higher, it still went up. Correct. So I guess what we gotta, you know, what this means for anybody looking to buy right now, there's still a lot of competition, right? Still a lot of competition, but it's actually not as bad. Not as bad as, as far as the competition goes. Now, what these homes are being sold mm -hmm. are the ones that are getting off the fence and taking advantage of this market. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So yes, we have less inventory. Mm -hmm. But people are now getting opportunities to buy the homes that they truly want yeah. and working out some of the creative financing that we have. Yeah, and we talked about that earlier as we were preparing for this talk is like, what are some of the opportunities you're seeing right now for clients, for um, anybody looking to buy in today's market? When you're meeting with someone and consulting them, what are some of the key things that you go over with them uh, to help walk them through the process? I think number one is focus on payment. Okay. Don't really focus on the rate because rate is going to change. Yeah. And, you're, and you won't even keep this loan for more than six months maybe yeah. where you might even refinance at that point. So the rate is not usually the issue. It's your payment. It's a payment, right? So if you focus on payment, mm -hmm. then you're able to now figure out where you could buy mm -hmm. and what you can afford. Yeah. And right. those are key things. Yeah. And opportunities are going to, especially with the way we have right now is that we have some key tools that we can use in order to help show you and educate you on by doing certain things we can maybe even get a better payment through the process got it like i know we were we talked about buy downs in Correct. in our meeting the other day uh, are you seeing that more common right now people using buy downs to get their payment down i think it's it's a good 50 50 split Okay. Because once again, you have limited inventory, so not all sellers are going to be willing to participate in the buy down. Yeah. But there is opportunity out there. Got it. And you have to take advantage of it. And what's a buy down? If you just explain it just really simply, what, is, what does a buy down mean? Buy down means that you're, you're paying in order to lower your interest rate for the first two years, let's say. Got it. And, and it's extreme. Yeah. We're not talking half a percent. We're talking a full 2% lower oh, wow. than the normal market. So if your rate's seven percent, you buy it down, you get down to five percent, right? Correct. Or even lower, depending, or even lower, on, depending on the on the program. And, and we get depending the seller, on how right? much credit you get. So it, it's a it's a combination of everything. And that's why it takes a really good savvy lender mm -hmm. to help the realtor find out exactly how much you need in order to get that type of buy down. 
Got it. Got it. Okay. So there's a, there's a lot lot to it, but can be done. And are there any other creative like financing options you're seeing that are, are maybe opportunities for some people out there to to get in the market and buy? You know what's 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 very interesting right now is that we see a lot of clients that are self employed. Uh, got it. They couldn't qualify either regularly or with tax returns or that are able to qualify now with mm. just as simple as a profit and loss mm, okay. or bank statements. Got it. So these opportunities are, are, are more and more happening yeah. than, you're, than the norm. Got it. So if you're self-employed, there's programs out there where Correct. you can just use your profit and loss and you yeah. could potentially get qualified off that. Correct. Yeah, because a lot of self-employed people on their tax returns, they write everything off. They, they write show, everything off. They don't show a lot of profit, but if you look at their profit and loss, you see the income coming in and, and they can justify the payments. Okay, so creative financing options, that's one. What are some of the other opportunities that you're seeing uh, or how are you advising? Well, I think it goes back to what we want to do is we want to coach mm -hmm. our clients on what is best for them, right? Yeah. So, you know, what are you willing to do? Where are your payments need to be? Are you, how much time are you willing to invest? Mm -hmm. And are you willing to expand your, your location? Yeah. Because not every, it, it might not be your dream home yeah. that you're buying. So you might have to step into something that's going to build you some appreciation mm -hmm. in the long term yeah. to be able to move up to that dream home that you really want. You know, it's funny you say that because I think a lot of people forget that just getting your foot in the door and getting some real estate, buying a piece of property, you build some equity and in a few years you sell that or you keep it as a rental right. or you refinance, pull some money out and then you can buy your next one. A lot of people forget that you can do that. They're thinking, I just got to go in and buy my my forever home, right? Uh, yeah, Which is really, really expensive, right? Exactly. And that's why when I'm coaching my clients is I'm saying, okay, where are you willing to locate? Or what is, what is the investment are you willing to put into this? Yeah. Because at sometimes you're going to have to put some time into it. Yeah. Maybe. You might have to travel a little further. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you finally got your foot into a property. Yeah. And in three to four years, you've built three to 400,000 in equity. Yeah. Now you could take that money and go buy yourself another home. Yeah, your dream so home, right? Your, your dream home or another investment home. Yeah. It just depends. It depends on what your what your goals are. And I think what you're getting at is you gotta expand your mind, right? Not expand. just be so tunnel vision, it has to be this. But what are some ways that you can get to your goal, Correct. even if you gotta break it up into multiple steps? Right? Yeah, and that's why it's key. You gotta, and you gotta have someone that's gonna show you all the stats, yeah. where, you're, where you're, you're gonna appreciate. Because keep this in mind, when buying a property, it's not just about buying that one home it yeah. also could be location yeah so is this area growing mm -hmm. how many homes are they truly building yeah how fast can you build appreciation mm -hmm. see these are all key things yeah when buying a home and if you're not being educated about that then you might not jump on that opportunity you might miss correct. the opportunity so you might say. miss the opportunity where a lot of people they always say the rich get richer yeah on opportunities like this yeah because everyone else is sitting on the fence they're taking advantage well, they said Warren Buffett invested like how many billions of dollars? 5.7 billion in yeah. DR Horton. DR Horton, which is a new build, uh, a new build company, right? Correct. They, they build new homes. So if Warren Buffett is putting his money into new housing, new housing. right? Yep. He's obviously seeing something, right? Going forward, seeing where that opportunity is. And he knows. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, it's all about opportunity. And if you start expanding your mind and looking outside and don't keep, don't just focus on one, one part of purchasing a home, yeah. you'll be surprised on what you can really do. I like that. I like that. Now, now let's end with this. What happens if rates drop, right? Because people think like, I'm going to wait until the rates drop, right? And in theory, yeah, that sounds great, right? If right. rates drop, I can get a lower payment, lock into a lower interest rate, but I think they're forgetting... Yeah, well, let's look about it. You just said inventory is still tight. Yeah. Rates are kind of high right now, correct? Yeah. What's going to happen when the rates drop? It's going to get even crazier, right? If you think you're going to lose money on rate, just imagine how much money you're going to lose on bidding on a property. Yeah. And we said that yesterday in our team meeting, right, is when you, if you buy a home for a million dollars, that's the most you paid for that home. You paid yeah. a million bucks for that home, right? Wherever your rate's at, that rate can change over time. If you refinance, if the Correct. rates change, the market changes. But if you wait and let's say rates drop and now that same home is going for 1.1 million or 1.2 million, you just entered the market at that higher price, right? right? And you can't change that. You can never change. You can't go I mean, back and change your not price. Not only can right? you not change the price, you cannot change your tax bracket. 
Yeah. If you think about it, right? That's true. Because once you pay, whatever you pay for that home and the tax that you're paying on that home. Property taxes, yeah. It never goes away. It never goes away. It's always going to be the assessed value. It's going to be And you're going to be paying higher property taxes. So for those of you guys watching, if you're waiting for the rates to go down, I uh, urge you, you know, and recommend that you really think it, you know, twice. You look at your payment, like Steve said, and because yeah. if rates go down, the inventory situation is going to get crazier. Right. Demand's going to shoot up. All these people who are waiting on the sidelines are going to come out, and that's going to shoot the prices up even more than they <sighs> and are. And the going money right that now. you will lose, yeah. is, by waiting, is just. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I can't even. <laughs> yeah. When I when I sit down and I show my clients the cost of waiting, yeah, they're like, oh. Can we get into a property now? Yeah, exactly. and they know it because it's it's the numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So the the key takeaway is, if the payment makes sense, you can Correct. afford the payment. You have the down payment, the location, all those things make yeah. sense. All those things check off. Then, it's when you get into the market, right? Correct. And and it's it's what is it? Time in the market versus trying to time the market, right? Exactly. Is, is that old saying? Yeah. Say. And, it, it, and there, like I said, there's opportunity. Yeah, there's opportunity out there. You know, everyone says, well, you know, there's no opportunity right now. Well, no, no, there's always opportunity. Yeah. It's just you have to be educated on exactly on how to take advantage of it. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys, that's what we got for you. August 2023 market update. Hope you guys got some value. If you need anything, if you want to explore your own personal situation, Correct. you want to know more about a certain area, you want to know more about these loan programs, and how to maybe get a temporary buy down or a self-employed program, reply to this video wherever you see it. Uh, we'll get you in touch with one of us or someone on our team and we'll take care of you. Yep, Till next time guys. Thanks Steve.